The Chairman. Call Denise Roach. Mr Chairman, um, I want to start my contribution by thanking the staff who have been involved uh, in the process during the Select Committee um, to bring this bill to the House. And I also want to acknowledge um, both the Labour Party and the National Party members who worked together very closely and very um, diligently um, to bring a, a new bill to the House, effectively, um, a bill that has been softened from the original. And I do want to pay tribute particularly to um, David Cunliffe for the work that he put into that. The Green Party position, however, is, is that at the end of the day, workers in the state sector will be worse off as a result of this bill passing. And I've checked with the Public Service Association tonight, who also say that they do not give unqualified support to this bill. However, they do acknowledge the work, particularly the Labour Party's work and the members from that party, in softening and in making amendments to the bill. And that that strategy has meant and will mean that the workers are not as bad off as they may have been before when the original bill was before the House in the first reading. I um, acknowledge that the, um, the, the amendments that have been softened include the restrictions around redundancy. Um, the redundancy provisions have been um, loosened since the, first, since the first reading. However, it's still a restriction. I've got an SOP, a supplementary order paper, um, for discussion in consideration tonight, which actually talks about restoring one of the clauses that was lost from the original 1988 state sector bill. And that's the, bill, that's the clause that relates to the transfer of employees and the transfer of functions and duties to new agencies and giving the workers the right to apply for those jobs. This bill actually contains an amendment that gives chief executives that right, but it's been, that right has been taken away from public servants. And this is a really important amendment because if you consider that last week in this House, the first reading was um, in front of the, um, the House for the Health and Safety Pike River um, Amendment Bill. And one large part of that bill was about the provisions where workers um, and health inspectors from, who are currently employed by MB can transfer to a new agency that is being created through this legislation that is before the House. And that had to go into legislation for every piece of new, uh, new legislation that is developed that creates a new entity or a new agency. And that's because it was being taken out of the State Sector Act. And we will have to do that time and time again, every time a new, uh, a new agency is formed. And there may be times where they are. We will also not be supporting this bill because of the things that have been left out, not just the transferal arrangements, but other things, including in the purpose <coughs> statement, the EEO, um, the EEO mention in the, uh, in, in the first part of the Act, which is around the purpose. Now, equal employment opportunities are not stated explicitly elsewhere in the bill. And when you combine that with another change from the original bill, which, is the, um, which was again in the purpose statement, and that was for state sector employers to, um, to be a good employer, and it's been changed to meet good employer obligations, which is a slight tweaking, but also a weakening. So when you put together the, e the loss of equal employment opportunity um, specific mention with that, we're starting to look at some weakening of some of the overall arching principles of the Act, um, which works, to, um, works against workers. It doesn't work in their favour. And I think we have to remember that we do need EEO. We need equal employment opportunities. And that's because the state sector, the public service, is, heaven, is, is, is female dominated a lot of the time. Yet, for all that, women in the state sector are still earning 
sometimes 8%, sometimes 10%, and sometimes 12% less than their male counterpart. Mr. Spe Mr. Chair. <coughs> In 2009, this government was actually, well, before 2009, the government was actually exploring and investigating what was happening for pay rates between male employees and female employees in the public sector. Um, and that was an, an investigation that was, um, that was being undertaken with the government's support. However, they pulled that support in around February 2009. And the reason they gave at the time was that the minister at the time, Tony Ryle, said that we couldn't afford to increase levels of remuneration. Now, we've had equal pay legislation in this country for over 30 years. Uh, and we still have an average income for women, weekly income for women, at 23% less than, um, than the average male income, weekly income. And when you consider that, that public service has been the bastion of good employee uh, and good employment practice, it's been a leader in setting decent standards for workers, which the private sector frequently follows. When you consider those things, then we must fight very strongly to maintain the provisions in the bill that will protect those workers. Again, I do acknowledge the work that has happened, particularly the Labour Party's efforts to soften and make a heck of a lot of amendments to the bill. However, we won't be supporting it. I call Maggie Berry. Thank you, Mr Chair. I rise to speak to the second reading of the State Sector and Public Finance.